Stugatz has a top five most boring quarterbacks to ever be in the Super Bowl. Greg, do you have any more before we get out of here for the day? Because this is the tough hour for you generally on Tuesdays. You've lost some stamina over the years. And I figure if I throw you some uh, some lobs on reheated football takes, uh, have you gotten them all out of your system? Or do you have any more before we get to uh, Stugatz's top five most no, boring quarterbacks? No, I'm good. I don't, I don't have any more reheated football takes that I haven't already uh, put on the burner so I think I think we're good right now uh, you know a little plug for my Greg Cody show podcast I just got that in so now we're all set hmm. he did mention before the show that he had perhaps his most famous guest in Greg Cody's show featuring Greg Cody history with fine Andre Agassi is on his podcast no way uh, Andre Agassi, I believe, uh, had the best sports biography I have ever read. I don't know what you talked to him about. I thought it was pickleball, but how would you tell the audience that they should go see, go, go check out the Greg Cody show featuring Greg Cody? It, it's an interesting chat with Andre with, Agassi. I hadn't had a chance to I meet am. him before. Uh, and we talked to him about pickleball because that's what he's promoting down here. There's a big pickleball two slam uh, happening at the Hard Rock on February 4th including John McEnroe and Maria Sharapova. And he's playing with, uh, Agassi is playing with his wife, who happens to be Steffi Graf. So it was a fun uh, talk about transitioning from tennis to pickleball and about his life and living, growing up in Las Vegas, which is now the boom town for sports. And uh, I, I asked him if, uh, if he's jealous that Steffi Graf has won more than twice as many majors as him. So we had some fun as well. It's a good interview. If, if you're not familiar with Andre Agassi's story or this biography, if you like to read at all, what I would just tell you is this person's growth on a public stage from that sport where young people can get eaten up and fame can eat all kinds of people up, young or old, the things that he learned, the wisdoms accrued from life that allow him to partner in life with Steffi Graf in a what seems like a truly functional, loving marriage, the things that he learned. The book was a revelation for a number of different reasons, but that man's growth has been extraordinary to watch as somebody who dominated American tennis in a way we haven't seen a whole lot of since. I wouldn't say he dominated. He was a very good player. He was supposed to dominate. Pete Sampras did. He did the dominating. Okay, but I mean... Semantics. I mean, right. fine, if right. you want to. He was great. Yeah. Like, he, I don't know why you would do that. I have no idea. There was no reason to do it. I just You said dominate U.S. men's tennis, and there was someone dominating at the same time, and it wasn't Andre Agassi. That's all. I was just pointing that out. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. He's yeah. Stugatz, Dan. Right. He, only won, he only won eight majors. I mean, come on. Win a ninth. <laughs> Where you been? Okay. But you're right. He has all that interesting stuff in his background. Of course, we didn't talk about any of that because it's the Greg Cody Show. It's not South Beach Sessions. But we had a fun interview anyway. I read the book, and I marveled at the fact that the pain that Agassi lived with towards the end of his career – and still lives with today is is amazing. Like, I didn't realize he was in that much pain. I read the first chapter when he was in pain. You told me to read it. I read it. I tried. I read a chapter. I didn't go any further because you keep talking Yo, about it. You ruined chicken it. Thigh. I, I knew that part didn't know. I'm telling the truth. What? No way that you read it. Just Google the recap. What's the last book you read? Cut out. Shit. Tell me reaching for a book is for rolling papers. Really? Just, just to tell me that somebody was more dominant than somebody else. It doesn't matter. What a up. But a up. But a up. Liar, didn't Badab. read a chapter. But a up. But a up. And you know it. And you know it. Bay. Bay. He bay. Brad. <laughs> Jay Glazer is here. <laughs> He is our football expert. He's the host of the Unbreakable podcast. He's the author of Unbreakable, How I Turned My Depression and Anxiety into Motivation, and you can too. Obviously the insider for Fox NFL Sundays. He is the owner of many $90 serums, and uh, we've exposed him a number of times on this show. But that's the only place that he is a bit fraudulent. Five dollars for uh, coffee. Real journalism, microphone. real journalism. Uh, tell me this, Jay. What are the fairest... Wait, what the what are you guys just doing? What did I just miss there? Uh, yeah. uh, those are the chickens. Those are the chickens that come out when someone around here usually Stugatz is lying. It's an assortment of chickens that come out there. Okay. The, uh, yeah. Yo, chicken Only Stugatz. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> Jay Glazer just here. said that that we was his, his natural musk, and he pays $90 to smell that way. <laughs> uh, can you tell us, Jay, what you believe to be the fairest criticisms of the coaches on Sunday? Because I'm hearing a lot of coaching criticism because Harbaugh didn't run the ball or Campbell went for it on fourth down. You, as someone who knows football and talks to yep. an assortment of football people, what are they saying uh, about Sunday that was done poorly by the coaches? Honestly, dude, I'm not going to criticize a coach who got to the AFC and NFC championship game. But also, like, this is nothing new for Dan Campbell. Every time Dan Campbell's been aggressive, everybody's applauded it. When it doesn't work, everybody kind of sh** all over him. And I, I, I think Dan Campbell's completely changed <clears throat> not just the culture of the Lions, but, man, changed that city, gave that city so much hope. So, man, I will never – look, I, I think if – Obviously, if you know Josh Reynolds comes up with those passes, everybody's going, oh, he's aggressive. But that's what Dan Campbell does. When you drop those passes and everybody craps all over you. But I don't. I never look at it something as one or two things defines you know a guy's what he's done during the season, but especially in championship games. Not, not at all. If you want to be aggressive in championship games, honestly, if that's who you are, if you're not changing from who you are, I don't have a problem with it. It sucks when it doesn't work but I really don't have as much a problem with it as everybody else. Let me ask a question the, a different way. Oh, those fourth down conversions, Dan. Yeah. Those were pretty heart racing moments in the NFL, were uh, they not? Yeah. Did you know that heart disease is the number one cause of death in the U.S. due to often uh, invisible risk factors? Learn more and assess your heart risk factors at checkyourheartrisk.com. Brought to you by Bayer Aspirin, the official sponsor of Fans Health. Seamless. <laughs> Can you tell me, Jay, uh, why Baltimore didn't run the ball more on Sunday? I think Baltimore also, I, I, early in the year, they lost a lot of running backs. I, I don't know they had a lot of consistency um, with their running game all year long. They kept you know, going back and forth between their different running backs. Um, losing Dobbins early in the season, it hurt them. But I just, look, I think more than that, I think Steve Spagnola took things away in disguise. He did such a great job of disguising what the Chiefs were doing. Um, I think the Chiefs just didn't have an answer. I mean, the uh, uh, what the Ravens uh, were able to do, I think um, I think the Ravens just didn't have an answer for a lot of what they were seeing out there. He did such a great job of thinking that, you know, they were bringing these players when it was actually on the other side of the field or, you know, such a great job blitzing those, those secondary uh, members as well. Uh, I, I just think it was more, I think – Spags out schemed them more than anything else. Michael Irvin said that uh, it's borderline fireable to allow Kelsey 11 catches on 11 targets. I would argue that if people could stop that, they would have done it the last 10 years. Right. Where do you side on that one? The same thing. If, yeah, it's like, you know, we were saying the same thing a couple of years ago um, uh, about uh, Cooper Cup constantly being open. Like, oh, how do you let this guy open all the time? It's not always just up to you. There's a reason why these guys are Hall of Famers. But also at the same time, yeah, he was – he got himself open because, um, you know, what I think Mike McDaniel uh, – McDonald uh, did also, um, they were able to find certain openings in the scheme that they could exploit, but it's not like it led to 34 points. So you could have, you know, yes, Kelsey did damage – uh, but he didn't end up, you know, ruining the game for, uh, for Baltimore for um, uh, Baltimore's defense completely. I want to ask you about the other tight end in the Super Bowl because uh, while people look at the box score and don't necessarily, uh, yeah, for George Kittle because if you look at the box score, it, minimal impact on that game. At all times. Yeah, but George Kittle, <laughs> I, I don't know. There's highlights on making did their way around. Did Kittle did blocking wise? Yeah, what he did against Aiden Hutchinson was oh <laughs> insane. There's videos all well, over yeah. social media. Is George Kittle the greatest blocking tight end of all time? Wow. Of all time? Of all time. No, I don't even think George Kittle would say. He, I, I think I didn't, I think Mercedes Lewis is probably the best blocking tight end in the NFL. Um, Mercedes Lewis is like a, having a, a tackle. If Mercedes Lewis wanted to move right now to right tackle, he could probably play like another six or seven years. But Kittle, what he does to people, yeah, it's um, – and, and I think the thing also is the way he just kind of destroys you and then pokes fun at you without you taking offense to it is really the mastery of George Kittle. 
But also, like, I I'll say this. I've known Kittle forever. I've known Travis Kelsey forever. I know everybody wants to hit, hit on Kelsey what's going on with him and Taylor Swift. Man, he's one of the rare superstars, too, that, you know, to, to get on such a, a, a bigger plane, popularity-wise, pop culture-wise, and the dude just hasn't changed. I give him a lot of credit. There's a lot of guys in this league we've seen. They, they <clears throat> man, they show up, and they're different people. All of a sudden, when fame hits them. And Kelsey was famous, but I like this. Totally different. But he's always been the same. Kittle, I, I don't think he could be anybody but who he is. Those guys are about as authentic as you get. Jay, why hasn't Bill Belichick been hired? I've been telling you guys out on this show for how long? Yep. Right? During the season, you guys said I was crazy. Well, I am crazy. But you guys were, you know, saying I was nuts. You said three, month, uh, three months ago, you said there would not be a line for his services. And, in fact, when you left the interview, you told me, hey, don't clip that and throw that to everybody because I don't want to be aggregated on being the right. one who's questioning Bill Belichick. But you did say three months ago. I didn't want it tabloided. That's what I said. I didn't want it, like, throw because that's what happens a lot of times, too. You say something that gets, like, kind of tabloided. I don't know what headline we're, getting, we're putting up there. But, yeah, no, I thought it the whole time. And, um I think I said it on your show over and over, and I said it on, on Fox as well. I didn't think there was going to be a big line because I think, you know, I, I told you guys, things kind of do change. They're where um, you're not just bringing in Bill Belichick, the coach. You're bringing Bill Belichick this culture of, you know, paranoia and control, and there's a lot. He's not just going to come and coach. He's going to come in and probably wipe out a lot of people that are in there, um, and it's it's – Okay to deal with when you have a great quarterback like Tom Brady and you're winning, but when you're not winning, nobody wants to go to work and be miserable. Um, and, you know, I, I think that – and that's – you know, I also told you guys that I, I think that the coaching, what people are looking for is, is different now than it had been. And, you know, you look at the Dan Campbells, you look at the D'Amico Ryans, you, you look at the Sean McVeighs, you look at Mike McDaniel, you, you look at it and go, okay – that's what these guys are connecting with because, you know, like these players are getting beat down constantly on their phones now with social media and, and Twitter and, and, and Instagram and Facebook. And last thing they need to do is get beat down by their, that guy who's, you know, that male figure that that's in their life that they want validation from. So I think that things have changed and what people are looking for from a head coach. Is he the greatest coach who ever lived? Absolutely. But there's a lot more that goes along with them. And I just looked at kind of some of the owners and the, the openings that will be open, and I just didn't really see a fit. Uh, even like, look, Atlanta was definitely interested. And even that one kind of surprised me that that would be the place that would have been so interested in him. And, and in the end, yeah, they, they I think they wanted to build Belichick the coach, but not everything else that came along with it. Jay, stay there. Greg Cody can't wait to ask you a question. We were just talking to Jay off air, telling him to come see us in Vegas. And he said, oh, downtown, downtown. <laughs> and, you know, he's going to be at the Wynn and the Cosmopolitan, but we're doing it dirty downtown. Style. I have him at the Luxor. Uh, no, that's the media hotel. Jay's not going to do that. Sure. No, Jay's going to do it. Jay's going to do it high He's end. He's a prominent media member. We are also doing it high end. Thanks to our partners over at Stadium Swim at Circa Hotel. We will not disparage them. I'm and we won't mention but... any other hotel brands because you don't do that during a promo. February 8th and 9th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Reserve your tickets now at CircaLasVegas.com slash Levitar. I am proudly downtown. I am proudly Circa. We had plenty of options on who we could I'm, partner I'm going, with. I'm going Tuesday to Saturday. The years that we don't have the Super Bowl, I, I don't go to the game. Uh, so I'm getting out of here. I'm actually going back to Cali. There's a there's a casino out here called Yamaha. That's where I'm going to watch it at. Oh, uh, haven't you watched a Super Bowl <laughs> at Sylvester Stallone's house before? No, we watch fights at okay. Stallone's house. Uh, why wouldn't I watch a fight at Rocky's house? Yeah, right. my yes. mistake. Good point. Uh, that is yeah. why Stugatz yep. is jealous of your so life. Jealous. Uh, Greg, what is it that you wanted to ask Jay Glazer? Jay, we need a part two on on Belichick's future. He's within 14 wins of Shula's all-time record for NFL wins. Is it conceivable? he might not get the chance to set that record. Um, man, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to it. You, know, you guys know me. I kind of like, I like to deal with fact. I don't know the answer to it. I don't know what his decision is going to be. You know, he may take a year off and go, oh man, I, I like this. Why do I need to go back and deal with this? He may sit there and go, no, I, I want to coach until, you know, like Tom Moore, just keep going and going and going and going. I can't answer the question because I haven't talked to him 
about that. Interesting that you would even have doubt, though, Jay. That seems sort of unfathomable to me that you would have doubt there. No, but I don't know what he's going to want to do. Like, he may sit there in the offseason and go, man, I could get paid an awful lot of money to just go on TV and talk about it, and this is a much better life. And we've all seen coaches that have said, hey, we, we're done. I mean, Jimmy Johnson, right? We're we're, we're done. Bill Cowher, um, and you thought Gruden was going to go that route for a while, and it's just sitting there and go, man, I, this is a much better life. This is an easier life. This is fantastic. I just get to show up, hang out with my butt. And the great thing about doing sports on TV, guys, is you still have that locker room. It's great about our show. You know, we've been there 30 years, but, man, on, on Sundays we have that great locker room. So, you, you know, the guys don't really miss football because we have each other. We have that brotherhood. Jay, if the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, do you think Andy Reid will retire? So it's funny because I asked Andy that last year. We were sitting in his office, and he was like, yeah, I'll have to you know, answer that. I'll have, I'll have some – I'll have to think about that. And then he forgot he told me that. And I'm like, you know, we're sitting there on the on the field of the Super Bowl last year. I said exactly what he told me in his office. And he said, what did I tell it to you? I said, we're sitting in your office last week. And he goes, oh. Man, I said, oh, I don't remember. Oh, okay. No, I, don't, I don't doubt you, but, man, I just, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, basically, Andy Reid doesn't doubt Jay Glazer's report on Andy Reid's innermost Correct. thoughts. From last week. Correct. There was a lot going on with Andy that week. I was like, Andy, what are you doing? Oh, it was funny, you know, because I remember going out there in the field talking to him, and he's like, what, do you have me retiring? I said, no, I don't have to retire. What are you talking about? And um, it was just me and him on the field. Like over and his, you know, he was I think watching his uh, his offense, you know, warm up, and um, and he said, I said, I didn't have you retire. What are you talking about? He said, Well, it's kind of been put out there. I said, This is what you're doing before the game. I said, No, I didn't say you retired. I said exactly what you told me, which is, man, I'll have a decision to make after this. But you're having more fun than you've ever had, and you know, just kind of this whole thing. And it, it did take out a life of its own. And he was like, Me and him were sitting there like, Dude. Not only we talk about it, like I walked out of your office and we talked about because he has a place down in California, not far from me, up here and what we do and all this stuff. And he's like, oh, all right. Yeah, no, I believe you. I just, I just, I just got so much stuff going on. And I remember walking off the field to Roger Goodell like, hey, what do you do in the middle of the field? I said, I'm talking to Andy. We're like, having this whole thing about it. he's retiring. He's not retiring. Roger's kind of shaking his head like, whatever. Oh, but now that you <laughs> now that you mention it, though, when you say a lot of stuff going on, because Andy Reid has dealt with a good deal of darkness with his kids, with being so professionally yeah. obsessed that, um, you know, whatever happens to a father because football yeah. keeps calling and stuff. And when you say a lot of stuff going on, his son, who worked for the Chiefs at the time, yeah. had a, a drunk driving accident that then has resulted in jail time. So some of this stuff... Uh, was really hard on him. But can you tell us, yeah. as someone who knows Andy Reid, how he is, and who knows mental health stuff, how he has navigated these huge darknesses in his life while football pulls him away and yeah. requires him to be obsessed and not balanced? Uh, be honest with you, uh, I, I don't feel comfortable repeating any conversations that we've had on that. That's his, you know, that's 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 one thing. Andy's one of my closest friends in the league. He's helped me through some really uh, dark stuff. Um, I've turned to him for advice dealing with, deal, dealing with stuff also, but I definitely don't feel comfortable repeating those kind of conversations. Oh, but, but I, I think this I'm, is I'm not where, asking, I'm not asking for the reporting. I'm asking from your perspective yeah. as someone who loves him and cares about him yeah. and sort of knows how difficult it is for a football man to be a family man because the leadership position yeah. requires so much insanity. Well, and not only that, it re requires so much time. And whenever, you know, I think, um, you know, when you're uh, uh, in this league and it takes so much of your time, um, you know, it's funny. Like, I had a talk with, with Mike Tomlin about um, him not being able to go to certain things for his kids. Uh, like, his daughter is a gymnast, and she's got a, she's an incredible gymnast, but that's a subjective sport, so he had to stop going. To, the, to, to her her uh, gymnastic meets because, you know, it could be held against her. And then he said, you know, I actually, like, told my kids, like, man, I know you didn't sign up for this scrutiny. And he got me thinking about it. I actually called my son, Sammy. I'm like, hey, man, I had never thought about it this way. But I said, I I'm sorry that I bring, like, our kids aren't able to just be normal and struggle through they even have to be great because there are kids um, and they can't just go through your normal 
trajectory a lot of times of working your way up a ladder or, try, or, or struggling through something and it's undue, it's, it's unfair attention to them. There's a lot that goes along with all this. And, you know, I, I think for a guy like Andy too, and this is what the one good thing about sports is it gives you this, this great family support system when things do happen um, and a great distraction for you when things happen as well. It's, it's a, you know, when you're on a football team, you do have, even though you're, you're the leader and you got to kind of take care of everybody else. And that's hard on a lot of these guys. But I always tell these other players and coaches, Hey, you know, these leaders got to take care of everybody else, but who takes care of them? Like you got to make sure that they're taken care of because they're lifting you up. But the great thing about a locker room is you do have 80 therapists sitting in there with you that you can just turn to on your right and your left every day. If you're vulnerable enough and you can open up and lean into those people. I know, Jay, that Deron Bland had five pick sixes this year, and I don't know how you do the measurements on great cornerback play, but Legereus Sneed, when I've watched him play, I can't Please. imagine that a whole lot of people are better than him. So when I right. ask you, how does Jay Glazer measure who the best corners in the league are? Do you use pro football focus? Do you what? How do no. you make the measurements? I actually use the guys who sit in our room, Fox Animal Sunday. I use Howie Long and Terry Bradshaw and Jimmy Johnson and, and Gronk and Stray. Like, we always talk about this. Um, but also, you know, when you talk to coaches also, <clears throat> you hear how much they don't go to a side of the field because of cornerback or certain things they know are getting taken away because of a certain cornerback. And uh, Legarius is as good as they get. That's, you know, Bland had those, those numbers because they're pick sixes and – what Dan Quinn and, and Al Harris and them did with him is certainly incredible. But Lejarius, I think, is, you know, he, he was kind of like the, the the new Jalen Ramsey, if you will. Because So here's a perfect example. Jalen is a guy where he'll challenge other people in that locker room, he'll challenge the coaches. He's so incredibly smart. You could do things with him that you can't with a lot of other guys. And that's something that everybody else wouldn't know about you know, how much he, he could also do that's separate. So a lot of it is how much you talk to guys. A lot of it is how much I get from those other guys sitting in the room. But, no, I, I think Legarius is uh, he's he's 1A. Legarius Sneed was actually only ranked 17th, uh, according to Pro Football Focus's final rankings of cornerbacks. He was actually behind McDuffie, his own teammate. 17. That would be my reaction to give me, go ahead and give me, but I don't know how the measurements are done on this because I do find some of this stuff to be complicated. You have to factor in scheme. I do trust pro football focus. Give me the list. Go, go up the list if you would. And who is number one on that list? Because to God, you remember, yeah. you remember you, uh, this He's is one. J Jamarcus, uh, Jamarcus chase. I'm sorry. Um, Jamar chase. Jamar chase. My yes. bad. Well, you know, I think Sir Tan's up there also really high up. Well, but Jamar Chase said when facing Kansas City, he said of McDuffie uh, and Snead, he said they don't have a Jalen Ramsey. He was trying to insult them. And uh, right. I don't know where Jalen Ramsey is on this list, but, Mike, what do you have there for the top 17? Well, Jalen was hurt for a lot of the years, so it's kind of hard, right? But I also know just what Jalen does, where he, you know, there's certain things you could do with him because he's so damn smart that you can't do it with other guys. And I don't know. I'm sure that's not focused into any rankings. I mean, they, they they crunch film and everything like that. In fact, if you go to his like that's overall, film though, you got to talk yeah. to people too. His, his grade yeah. rank is even in the 30s. So yeah, I, I feel like I'm not going to give you what you want. Oh no, way. I just want to. But I, I think wanted, he's no, very I just good. wanted to know who's number one. That's all. I want to know how they're Sauce. ranking their top five. Sauce Gardner. Okay, yeah, that makes Jalen Johnson. Yeah, Sauce Gardner. Yeah, Sauce is definitely up there. Absolutely. Yeah. What can you Sauce and Sertan are up there. What can you tell me about the Detroit offensive line? Who were the uh, who were the best offensive lines that you saw this year? Because I was saying that on Sunday, the most impressive thing I, I, I saw say, was that line yeah. in the first half against San Francisco. Oh, man, they were just – how much those guys like Panay Sewell, how he can move is ridiculous. I, I still think Philadelphia's offensive line is the best, um, which is why they can, you know, do that push, push, push for like freaking 17 yards per play. Um, they're there. Um yeah, Detroit's offensive line, they're building. And that, that's the thing, too. I know Detroit lost, but I don't think this is going to be this flash in the pan and that's it. And I know Dan Campbell, um, well, I was even texting with him about it, saying, like, you don't say it's just one and done, man. You got you guys are going to be in there for a long time because of what they're building, because of that culture that, that they're building in there. Uh, but that offensive line, building from there, man, that's uh, 
Those guys can move. They'll maul you. They play through injuries. They got everything you're looking for. They're, they're right there. We have less than 90 seconds left. Tell people what you're doing with Unbreakable. It is rebranding now. It's going from a mental yep. health podcast to a mental wealth pro uh, podcast. And it's where you're dedicating your energies, your life's work these days. Tell them what you're doing. And our first guest, it'll be a two-parter this week and next week, is John Lynch. The, the, obviously, the architect of this 49ers team is going to the Super Bowl. And you know what, man? I, I talked about mental health. I wrote a mental health book a couple of years ago to get – us to have words so we could start having this conversation with each other um, because we need to walk this walk together. We got to be each other's teammates. And I think now that we did that, now I kind of want to take the fact that, all right, we understand it's out there. We know that what goes on between the ears um, is not something to be ashamed of. It's something we could talk about more. And now I just want to use this platform to start inspiring. You know, everybody who has done big things, they've gone through stuff. They, they all have an inspirational story. You guys, you know, we talked about here, Mike, Deals making 9450 bucks a year for 11 years, getting turned down over and over and over uh, to get my first full-time job as an NFL insider. So I want to start having leaders of all different fields to find out what they've done between their ears, what's behind their rib cage, and use that and take some lessons from them. And I've already, we, we did a lot of that when it was called a, 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 a mental health podcast, but I think mental health, people are still like, all right, you're just talking about depression and anxiety. No, no, no. No, there's so much more that goes into it. Mental health is also building yourself up so you can build your mental wealth up so you can go make your dreams come true. So you can get through things. So you can overcome certain things. And, you know, life is about the things that we overcome. Jay, good seeing you. Unbreakable, a mental wealth podcast. We will see you in Vegas, sir. See ya. I see Tony's things to ponder folder, and we're going to get to it, Stu Gatz. We're oh. going to reach in there. How many things are in there, Tony? Is it multiple things, a plural okay. things uh, to ponder, or is there yeah, a thing or one, two to ponder? Two, what three, a great four, idea. five, six. We've got seven different things oh. in the folder. Um, here, let me see. Uh, we got AI. Question mark? All right. So, oh, uh, I just, mean, uh, just, uh, I'm just giving you a little bit of a flavoring. Iverson. Billy, what do you think about what's <laughs> happening there? You seem to lack confidence in that folder. It just seems like a lot of things you could Google. You can Google? That's not the point of go – it's not Googling the, the answer. It's having a conversation about it and then pondering about All it. All right. Oh. So it's I pondering love to ponder. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, ponder this, Stugatz, because yeah. you would love this. Uh, I saw a video the other day, and you got to have friends who keep you humble. Tom Brady is walking through what looks like a – petting zoo of some sort with his entourage and one of his entourage members points and says oh look the Mahomes exhibit and it's goats <laughs> not surrounded by yes men <laughs> That's Interesting. well played by a friend. I, I mean, I, I would have, I would have preferred if I'm Tom Brady for a little bit of respect on that. But Brady, uh, Brady thought it was funny. Which do you think is worse by an employee, that or Tyreek Hill's employees filing for divorce on his behalf without his consent? You know what? I gotta put that in the folder. Okay, let's see what is in the folder, Tony. Are we going to pick what things out randomly, or are you uh, going to come I'm just out gonna with, go with the first thing here? <laughs> okay. Bill Gates? Question mark. Oh right. my God, right. this guy. Are we pondering? What are we doing? Let's ponder. Okay, Dan. Bill Gates is annoying. What? what are we pondering? What are we doing? Is, that, <laughs> are, is it, are, are you incapable? It was of, in the folder, Dan. Pondering. Are, I'm I thought we all just. I don't know how the game works. It's not my game. It's Tony's game. Do we all discuss Bill Gates with a question mark? What do we well, do with Bill Gates? Well, it's a things to ponder, and he's pulled out <laughs> Bill Gates. So do you have opinions on Bill Gates? I do. I'm tired of Bill Gates, okay? Bill Gates is annoying me because every other day he's putting out articles about things that, I'm not that he's not qualified to put out articles on, okay? I don't care about the 10 tips to help me live a longer life. I don't care about nutritional tips from Bill Gates. I don't care about it. Who is Bill Gates? He invented the computer, okay? He might have stolen that too, by the way. Your own question. And he's a one-trick pony. <laughs> do me a favor and do it again, yeah. Bill Gates. Do something else. Didn't invent 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 something computer. else. But just because you invented Microsoft or the computer yeah, stole that no, too. No, no, it's or the modern day computer does stole. not give you permission, Operating okay, system. to ruin everything for me. Here's what NASA is going to look like in 10 years. Here's what we're doing to our planet. And this is what it's going to look like in 10 years. You know what? Let me see what happens. 
Stop spoiling everything, okay? When states start falling into the ocean, you know what? I want to experience it and see it for the first time. He's oh right. He's God. so right. Thank this you. guy's a nerd, yes, dude. Right. Worry about what you got to worry about. Yeah. Read books. Do something this else. This guy's a like, nerd. It's you're buying up all the farmland. Yeah. Why? Uh, yeah, hmm, that's a computer. It gives you permission to tell me how to live my life. It tells me I'm, I'm going mean, to eat Jesus. bugs in 20 years. Get out of here, Thank dork. You. If you were so smart, why didn't you invent Amazon? Thank you. Exactly. And invent something else. I mm-hmm. mean, again, you know, he's One resting on his laurels. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy. <laughs> What's get he done lately? Uh, put it on the poll, You please. want nutrition advice from Bill Gates? Dude, the like, guy looks like a mummy, dude. Nutrition. Get out of here. Thank sure, you. He does yes. look like a mummy. I mean, come on. Who wants to look like that? Can I tell you Not something? Me. Can I tell you something I saw Let's the other day? Let's take creatine, I bet. I saw a video on social medias, and it was for an ice cream sandwich that doesn't melt. And they were, like, trying to tell you, like, I left this ice cream sandwich out for 12 hours, and it doesn't melt. And I think that what they were trying to tell you is, like, this is full of this and that, and you probably shouldn't be eating it. And I was like, finally, advancement in ice cream that doesn't melt. Like, this is what I've wanted my whole life. If I go to have an ice cream sandwich sometimes, it melts in my hands. It gets all over sticky, all this stuff. I don't get to enjoy it. I'm glad that I'm finally able to eat an ice cream sandwich that doesn't melt. You want to eat fake plastic food. Correct. If it doesn't melt, yes. All right. He's, He's Bill Gates guy. My bad. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Lebitard Show, all one word. Bill Gates, get out of here, dork, yes or no. Uh, Does Bill Gates look like a mummy? And did Bill Gates invent the computer? Because I'm not sure he invented the computer. The modern-day computer. When's the last time you used Windows? I mean, sir, invent something else. Mm -hmm. Last time, Dan. Uh, well, I'm the bad person to ask. The answer is you haven't done it in a long, time. You're a Mac guy, Dan. I can see it in you. He's got an AOL email address. I (laughs) imagine he's been playing Minesweeper (laughs) this entire break. I I just don't like these guys, even (laughs) Bezos to an extent. I mean, they invent something, they're big shots, and all of a sudden they're telling me the 10 tips to live a longer life. Please. Please. I mean, come on. I mean, what's Henry Ford done lately? Thank you. You know, he invents the automobile and then just takes the rest of his life off. Here's a tip. Earn a billion dollars. It gives you a license to tell everyone else how to live their life. He's I don't right care. I mean, seriously. Well, I think he's taking that tip then. Well, I mean, listen, I'm going to live my life the way I want to live my life, okay? Yeah. Not the way Bill Gates wants me to live my life. Amen. That's all I'm trying to say, unless he invents something else. Then I'm willing to listen. I'm going to put this back in the ponder file, by the yeah, way. Just, well, I think we So we're still pondering. I, I, well, no, we're I, still pondering. But I yeah, think you should pondering. throw that out. We There's just, still some meat on that bone. Yeah, there yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. Let's see what oh, else is more, in there. Yeah. The things to ponder. Not in Bill Gates' bones, though, because he looks like a mummy. Christian Ponder. Whatever happened to him? Oh, wow. Things to think about. What did happen? He's a decent quarterback. Why did he not get another shot? Yeah. Took her name. I'm going to keep that one in there. I thought he was going to be good. That had less pondering on it than the yeah, other. I mean, uh, <laughs> All that had was a ponder joke on it. There we really was. <laughs> no, no, we were thinking about it. We're pondering. Christian Ponder, whatever happened to him? What the hell's that? Some Freemasons? Anybody want to take a stab at that? What? Now? My brother was a Freemason. Really? Really? Yeah. How'd he get in? It's hard to get in, and it's kind of a secret, and you have to go through an assortment, a well, labyrinth of if things. If you know. Then. Pondering. He Billy, Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins is also a Freemason. I've always wanted to be part of a secret society. This is a secret society, and it's hard to get into. Uh, Jeremy, can you look up for me, please? Uh, because the Freemasons, I don't know whether they're one of the most exclusive clubs. I don't think they're the Illuminati or anything like that. But uh, Freemasons, I remember my brother had to go through a testing labyrinth. You can't just walk in and pay a membership free fee to get into the Freemasons. You can't just shoot a finger going to be like, what's up, boys? What are we, what are we doing here? Huh? Well, Gates can. I mean, not. <laughs> <laughs> Not even him, um, what level was he, Dan? Do you know? Um, I think it was a secret. He didn't talk uh-huh, about it shame. very much wow. because I think there were secrets involved with being a Freemason that you only shared with other Freemasons. Well, can't you then just anyone say they're a Freemason no, and then when they ask you follow-ups, it's like, it's a secret. I actually I have an incredible you. story about that. Uh, of one of my, my grandfather's brother, so my great uncle, was a Freemason. And in Cuba, they were rounding everybody up and Castro's forces were there. He was on a wall. And he gave a, a secret handshake. Not a firing squad wall. Uh, at a, yeah, at a firing squad wall. The guy came around was like kind of making sure that nobody had any weapons on him. He went to shake his hand and gave him a Freemason handshake, and the guy let him walk. I mean, there oh. are benefits, I would assume. Sounds yeah. like he was a communist. Are we going to find out that there was like some crazy Freemason controversy, you know? I don't uh, know. I mean, almost there's definitely. There's sure, a ton of them. Is. Yeah, sure, yeah, pick one. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, there's just... A, is anyone else in like fire. a secret society before we move forward? Anybody want to reveal that? <laughs> I don't believe among us that we have any secret society <laughs> members, but I also wouldn't know given that they are secret society. I was in, I was a, a member of Columbia House. I don't believe that has the same standards as uh, the, free, the Freemasons. 
I got a bunch more here, Dan. I can probably take. This well, I don't want to leave one. here. I want Jeremy to find uh, what the labyrinth is on how it, there's nothing I think on the, the whole internet. premise is that you're not supposed to know. No one knows. I'm trying really hard here, Dan. Greg is a blood. Uh, I'm looking at the description <laughs> of Freemasonry, mm. and it looks it's like he belongs bizarre. with Crips. <laughs> a blood or a Crip? Do they get along now, or are Crip they so boring? Uh, excellent Only in expertise. the memes. Uh, go ahead. You were saying, Greg. <laughs> uh, Freemasonry refers to a fraternal organization. Guilds of Stonemasons. Are you just from reading from Wikipedia? Are you just no, he's not even reading from Wikipedia. He's reading from the first page of Google. Right. So he didn't even get to the Wikipedia exactly. article because I saw the same thing. Yeah. All I want to know is, is it free to get in? Because hmm. yeah. it implies that it is <laughs> free masonry. I said crypts because I, I meant like tombs. Ah. Okay. Very. I get it. Okay. Very clever way to advance the joke. Crypt. I want to apply. How do you apply for Freemasonry? You have to join a lodge. Well, is it free, not? No, that's Elk. No, it says right here, joining a lodge. Moose and Elks are lodges. Yes. Where where do Freemasons congregate? Like, where do they meet? How do they meet? Is it online? Now we're pondering, boys. Is it like a local building? (laughs) We are pondering. This is a pondering. Asking all the right questions. I know, right? In retrospect, do you see why the Christian ponder one was a bad idea? (laughs) (laughs) Had nothing. Yeah, we pondered a little bit. <laughs> we didn't ponder at all. We, we the reason you're saying now we're pondering boys is because of how little we pondered on Christian. Ponder this: Who would you trust more with nutritional advice and how to live longer, Bill Gates or Antonio Gates? Hmm. Ponder that. Okay. Paul Famer. That's Thank a you. good question. Thank you. Billy, the delight on your red face suggests to me that you know that's not a Antonio good Antonio Gates, look at him and look at Bill. Like I mean, God. come on. Yeah. Who's telling me how to live mummy, healthier? How mummy over here, please. Come on. How mummy? Got one more, Dan. We're out of time. <laughs> NFL rigged? Oh, oh, it oh my God. Just to ponder. Oh, we're just ponder. pondering. We're just pondering things. Wow. Wow. The answer, of course, is yes. <laughs> Look at Jeremy. His face is radiating an ignorance. He can't find anything on the internet. I can't find anything. (laughs) It's working.